Flip to Freedom, episode number 23. Hello again, this is Sean Terry from the Flip to Freedom podcast. We are on episode number 23. Now, if you're here for the first time, I am here to help you escape the 9 to 5 and live the lifestyle of your dreams by learning how you can make an absolute fortune flipping properties in your spare time, even if you're brand new, you're just getting started today, and you have no cash, you have no credit, and you have no experience. You can do this business irregardless of those things, which is why I love it. Brand new person gets started, and they can uh, do incredible. Make 7000 3000 5000 10000 their first you know, month by uh, by flipping properties in their spare time. Now, we have uh, been doing an episode that started last week, and it's your fast start to your very first big check. That's what it's a, it's a detailed step-by-step instruction on exactly how to go out and get your very first check. The last week episode, we talked about how to build a buyer's list in detail. I went through excruciating detail, exactly what you need to do um, to build a buyer's list, and why do you want to have a buyer's list? Because listen, if you've got, if you got ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty people that are looking for properties, and you know exactly what they want, all you got to do is tee it up to them, tee up a property that's wholesale, and you can make a spread, and you will have an unbelievable amount of confidence. Uh, knowing when you're talking to motivated sellers that you have buyers in your pocket that are going to buy this property and they're going to buy it quick. It's, uh, it gives you a, a whole different confidence level uh, when starting this business out. So today we are going to talk about how to assemble a real estate investing dream team. Um, it's very important to have a good team around you. and We're going to go in detail on what team members are a must um, what do you have to say to get them on board, how to structure the, the relationship, and uh, we're going to go in detail on that in this episode. Now, if you haven't done so already, go to flip2freedom.com, and you can download my free 129-page blueprint that goes exactly, in detail, exactly how you uh, can quit your job in 19 weeks or less, um, by flipping properties in your spare time, working around your current job, exactly how to do that in detail. And I, uh, I leave nothing out of this book. I've got, um, I've received unbelievable reviews from people that are, are, are just appreciative on the, on the information. So if you haven't done that, definitely read it uh, in detail. It's, um, it's a lot of good information. Now, I'm also launching the Flip to Freedom Academy coming soon, and it's basically a, a, an affordable coaching program then I'm going to only work with 50 people. That's all I can physically, feasibly work with um, and a coach all across the entire country on exactly how uh, to uh, go out and uh, build this business. I, I can tell you one thing is that, which I never had. I pretty much had to figure this uh, out all on my own. Um, but one critical, critical thing um, is you can have all the information. You can read the book. You can, you can, you can listen. I mean, I have 20 this is my 23rd, 22 different podcasts of tons and tons of information on exactly how to do this business, okay? And what what the, what the critical fact is that, that I found in talking to people is they have to or feel the need to to need to be able to reach out to talk to somebody, to be able to um, have that personal connection with someone um, to help them through the process, someone that they can call up and say, hey, is this a deal or no deal? Um, you know, what? How do I structure this one? What do I say to this person? How do I do this? And I was, I was just talking to a, uh, a guy I'm working with here in, uh, in uh, Arizona, a guy named Drew, and he um, called me up and he had this guy on the phone and and uh, it was like like it's the second call he got from a yellow letter campaign that he's doing to uh, to uh, expired listings, and the guy wanted one hundred and seventy thousand. Everything uh, around there is going for eighty to ninety thousand. So he said, "Well, what should I do?" Well, if the guy wants one hundred and seventy and everything's worth eighty, you know, then it's no deal. So I, you know what I told him, I said, "Listen, you know, the guy's motivation level is obviously not there, and." 
you know, got to basically put them on the calendar and follow up with them for 30 days and, and, and call it a pass. And, uh, and, you know, we talked about the understanding of that you'll get 25 leads. For every 25 calls that come in, you'll get one good deal out of 25 calls. You know, so chalk this one up as one of those 25 calls that we'll put on the shelf that's a, that's a pass. So, but people need that, you know, someone to reach out to, to talk to, 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 to go, okay, I know what I'm doing. And I worked with, uh, um, uh, Josh and Christina, who uh, the factory worker who who got started in, in on his first deal, he's like, you know, about a couple weeks into it, he's like, yeah, are we doing the right thing? And you know, we're talking to people, we're sending letters, and you know, I put some bandit signs out, and you know, we're doing the right thing. And I said, hey, you're doing it. Just keep going. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing the right thing. Um, and um, and they felt that confidence, and they went out and got their first check. Now they got their second deal up in escrow. They're going to turn around and sell. So they're do they're on their way. They're doing their second deal now. They're going to go next thing. They'll do their third deal, and they have a lot of big dreams and aspirations to uh, uh, to uh, to accomplish things. So so part of this Flip Two Freedom Academy is to be able to have that. Now I'm going to tell you right now, you don't need that. Okay. I give enough free information through the podcast and through the books that you don't need that. You don't need that. <laughs> you can do, you have tons of more information than I ever had when I first started. But if you want to have someone to be able to call and walk you through the presentation stuff, that's what the Academy, the Affordable Coaching Program is going to be about. But I'm going to tell you, you don't need it. All right. Now. We are uh, going to get into exactly how to assemble a dream team, uh, but before I do to do that, um, I'm going to be launching some incredible free information coming out here in the next uh, couple weeks um, uh, prior to launching the Flip to Freedom Academy, so so you can get the information and uh, move forward and be able to develop this. But one of the things that um, I have been very reluctant uh, to release is my internal spreadsheets. Um, and I guess reluctant because um, it's it's having these internal spreadsheets are uh, I use them every single day. They are uh, uh, spreadsheets that I've developed um, for for this business, and um, and they are uh, basically a cornerstone, especially when it comes to marketing. I mean, I, I have a one spreadsheet that you can plug in the marketing from bandit signs to yellow letters to, um, and you can plug exactly whether you're doing an absentee owner, whether you're doing, um, uh, you know, inheritance list, or you're doing probate, whatever. You can plug in the different uh, marketing mechanism, how much marketing uh, you want to do, and it will break it all down, and it will spit it all out, tell you exactly what the marketing cost will be, and exactly how much money you can expect to make. It is, it, it makes everything so clear uh, for for a couple different reasons because it's all it's all formulated out so when you just plug it in it will tell you it'll just spit exactly so if you want to make eight thousand dollars a month you can adjust it within the spreadsheet and figure out exactly how much marketing you'll have to do to make eight thousand dollars a month it's crystal clear it gives you a defined goal and it works and it's it's unbelievably accurate when it comes to um, actually applying that marketing to getting the results it's actually you know better but you can you can put like your average deal if you if you make an average of five thousand dollars per deal or some cities like in uh, San Francisco well maybe it wouldn't be five thousand deal maybe it'd be fifteen thousand deal because the property height prices are uh, so much higher so I'll be releasing that for free um, um, to you coming soon so make sure you go to flip to freedom dot com and and uh, sign up for the uh, um, just to, to download the book there's an uh, a little box on the front page where you can enter your email and you can download that report for free and you'll get on our mailing list um, so you can uh, get this information that's going to be coming up. All right, now let's get done with that and let's talk about the meat. Let's talk about exactly how to build and uh, talk to and structure and uh, who you need to talk to to assemble a dream team. All right, first off, the dream team members. Who are they? Well, first off, you have to have a title company, an escrow officer, uh, or an attorney. Now, depending on which state you're in, some states um, they use title companies. Some, you know, states use escrow offices. Some states use attorneys, um, like back in New York or Rhode Island or, or so, or Vermont actually. So, so uh, whatever state you're in, you're going to have to have a title company, an escrow officer, uh, escrow company, or a an attorney that will close the transaction for you. 
Okay. The second one is a realtor. Third one is appraiser. Fourth one is an insurance agent. And we're going to go through in detail on each one. Now, first one, a title company. Escrow office or an attorney. Um, now, like I said, each state has a, a different one. Um, you can... I, I'm going to post up on the uh, the blog at Flip to Freedom on there um, on this particular post. I'm going to print put, put the map up there so you can see that exactly. So you can look at your state. It'll give you a color code and exactly uh, what uh, you have in your state. In uh, Phoenix here, we have um, a title company that we just go to, and there's a, a title officer that will that closes all of our transactions here. And um, and but that map will show you exactly what to do. So if you want to go there, you can check it out. All right. Now, what you are looking for. Now, when you're looking for um, uh, one of these, you're looking for someone that works with investors, that does investor deals, okay? And they understand um, how to work with investors. They understand um, you know, the structure of transactions that we're going to talk about. But um, also, too, they'll give you investor rates. We get 50% rates of what um, anybody else would pay just because we're a volume, and we do volume, and we're investors. Uh, so you're looking for someone that works with investors. First thing you want to look for. Second thing is um, understanding they understand double escrows or simultaneous closes. Okay, um, in a double escrow, we can get we'll get into detail that in the next episode when we talk about uh, talk uh, structuring deals and and uh, finding motivated sellers. Um, and a simultaneous close and a double escrow are you know the exact same thing but just different terminology. A wrap transaction where you're taking the property subject to the existing loan and you're wrapping that existing loan um, so it can be serviced by a servicing company. Um, and also they understand assignment contracts, exactly uh, you know, how to uh, assign a contract to a motivated, uh, to a, a cash buyer. So um, now the thing is when, when uh, you know, where do you first off? Where do you find a title company? You know, when I first, if I look back and I first started, and I in in and I knew I had to have a title company to close a transaction, I actually um, drove around my neighborhood, you know, and I and I opened up the uh, the yellow pages and I looked in my particular area and I drove around the neighborhood and I started looking for title companies and I went into a couple title title offices there and I made some phone calls around um, and I just talked to them. I sat down and thought, you know, found out if they're available and talked and sat down with them and asked them if they could do double escrows and simultaneous closes and assignments and just tried to get a feel of exactly uh, what, you know, how the transaction uh, would work and if, and if I found someone that I could relate with. And I found this lady when I first started, her name was Barb Bass and, um, or is Barb Bass and she's since retired and she was my first connection and, and I had, I had a great relationship with her. I didn't really understand the business when I first started, but, um, she helped me through the entire process. And the process is, is pretty much this, is that you know, um, we, last week we talked about finding uh, cash buyers. Uh, this week we're talking about assembling a team. But when you go out, and you, next week we'll talk about motivated sellers. When you start marketing for motivated sellers, you're going to get phone calls coming in. The phone calls are going to come in. You're going to book an appointment with them. Once you book an appointment with them, you're going to go out and negotiate a deal. Once you negotiate a deal, you're going to sign a purchase contract. And when you sign that purchase contract, you're going to get now give that purchase contract to your escrow officer, your title agent, and you're going to give it to them. And what they are going to do is they're going to do a title search. They're going to look on there to make sure that the owner of record is the person selling the property. That's uh, very important. And they're also going to look at to see if there's any other liens or judgments on the property other than ones that are, that are disclosed. Um, I've done properties before where they've had pool liens on the property. They've had... Um, City violation liens on the property. Um, we just were in, under contract right now. We're working on getting the city violations cleared or getting at least a payoff on a property that we're working on right now. So, so there are, it definitely happens. There are things on title that will pop up, especially in a distressed situation. So what the title company will do, or the escrow officer, your attorney, will pull um, all the information that's on title that needs to be cleared to convey clean title when you're selling it uh, to the cash buyer. Okay. They'll also uh, find out what taxes are due, if there's any back taxes on there, or sometimes there's IRS liens on the property. Most of the time, though, most of the time, 
uh, when you get a property under contract, they'll uh, only have maybe a mortgage on the property, and they'll have uh, you know taxes or whatever taxes are prorated to do to uh, get the transaction closed. That's that's what happens the majority of the time. Okay, um, so what the process is is now they'll, they'll take that. You'll get a title report. You'll know exactly what's going to uh, need to be cleared. Then what they're going to do is they are going to pull the payoff from the bank and find out exactly what the uh, the existing payoff needs to be paid off um, on the loan. Let's say they have a loan with say Wells Fargo. They're going to figure out exactly what the payoff amount is, and then you know you're going to have a purchase price on the property. Let's call it you know sixty thousand dollars and they have a loan of fifty thousand dollars so essentially they can get a ten thousand dollars dollars on there excluding um, any type of proration of taxes and you'll know that exactly um, so that's all you have to pay off at closing or that's all how the cash buyer has to pay off at closing and now you're gonna have that contract you're gonna have the title report you're gonna know everything that you have on that property that to, to convey clean title to the cash buyer then now that you have that information, then you can start marketing the property to cash buyers, telling cash buyers about it. And now you have a cash buyer that says, I want it. I'll take it for 70000 or whatever it is. And then you'll sign a purchase contract with them. And then you bring that contract down to the uh, the same escrow officer and open up escrow. And what will happen is, is that they will, in turn, uh Take those both of those contracts and do what's called a double escrow simultaneous close or an assignment, and you can assign your interest on your buy side to the buyer uh, for a fee, and it's and they will do everything for you. Okay, if you have a good escrow officer, they'll prepare the paperwork. They'll uh, they'll instruct the buyer to uh, wire in funds on the property. And um, and you know in, in our example we just talked about they uh, they have a fifty thousand dollar loan they get you're under contract for sixty and you turn around and sell it to the cash buyer for seventy thousand, well guess what the buyer is going to get the property for seventy thousand you are going to be assigning it or double escrowing it to them for ten thousand dollars and they're going to wire in the balance which is sixty thousand dollars of which. Fifty thousand is going to go to the bank to pay off the Wells Fargo loan we talked about, and the other ten thousand is going to go to the seller. So, how much cash do you bring in? How much cash do you bring in? You bring in none. The buyer is going to wire in the seventy thousand in funds. Fifty thousand is going to go to the bank. Ten thousand is going to go to the seller, which brings it now to sixty, and ten thousand is going to go to you, which brings it now to seventy, and then. The buyer is going to get clean title at a purchase price of $70,000. The escrow company will take care of everything. They'll arrange with the seller to sign all the documents. They'll prepare all the documents. They'll ar arrange with the buyer uh, to sign all the documents, and they will prepare all the documents. So they're going to set those up. They'll order the payoff from the bank and make sure that's clear. They will do everything. They'll pull all the paperwork together. All you have to do is bring the contracts and instruct them if you want to do an assignment, a double escrow, a simultaneous close, or however, or a wrap, however you want to do the, the transaction or how the transaction is set up and structured, you just got to give them instructions on how you want to do that. Okay? That's the process from basically start to finish. Um, that they will, uh, the service that they will provide for you, and they will get a fee for doing that. And they, they will, you don't have to pay them a fee up front. Um, you don't, uh, when they uh, run a title report, that's part of the transaction. Um, you won't have to pay them for that title report. A title report becomes part of their service. Um, so don't worry about that. It's not like you have to give them $500 to open up escrow. They will get paid when the property closes. And that's part of the closing costs that the buyer is going to agree to pay when he purchases the property. Okay. Um, now, when you are walking in, and let's say you open up the phone book and you find a title company, let's call it Security Title or Fidelity National Title. They're a large uh, title company across the country. You can Google them if you'd like. But let's say you, you know, you find a title company and you find you talk on the phone and you find uh, someone who uh, deals with investors. And you want to set an appointment with them so you can sit down and, and, and get an idea and you can start building a relationship with them. Um, when you're talking to them, you know, 
you know, you can lead on that you're, you know, new and you're brand new and you're getting started, but also, too, that you plan on doing a lot of business. You plan on doing, bringing them a lot of contracts and doing marketing. So they see a potential, obviously, value, you know, in working with you that you could bring them business. And, and title companies right now are definitely looking. They're marketing. They have marketing people looking for people like you uh, that could bring them escrows so, so they can, uh, so they can make their fees and their profit. Um, so when you walk in there and you're talking to these people, listen, you're coming there with the potential of bringing them business. So you want to find someone that you can work with. And maybe it's not the first person. You know, you might have to talk to five to ten title companies before you find someone that you like. But that person is going to be a key key important person of your team so make sure you interview them and make sure that they are the right person for you that fits your personality that fits what you're trying to do and the responsive um, if you don't have a responsive uh, title officer um, escrow officer attorney whatever it's going to be very difficult because you need to have the title reports quickly so you can turn the properties quickly um, and then set up with the buyers and set up with the sellers and get the paperwork done in a timely fashion you have to have that to be successful so you are looking for the time frame that they can turn this information how quick they can do it and how responsive and also how busy they are if you you, you don't want to have the the top rated you know um, title officer in your in the entire you know country or an entire county that is so slammed that she can't spend any time with you you want to have someone that deals with investors and but also too is not so busy that they can spend some time with you all right now let's talk about realtors when we deal with realtors you know, realtors are another key aspect. Now, why do you need a realtor? <laughs> well, uh, first off, um, a realtor is key for obtaining comparable sales, of knowing what's going on in the neighborhood. So let's say, for an example, um, you know, you tie up a house and you have it under contract from a motivated seller. The first thing I would do is drive the neighborhood and start looking for uh, realtor signs, for sale signs from realtors in the neighborhood. And I'll start calling realtors around there just to find out the square footage, what the property is listed for, um, how old the property is, if it's bank owned, is it distressed, is it a, uh, is it a, um, uh, just a regular uh, transaction that's not a you know it's not a Fannie Mae home or, or Freddie Mac or whatever or it's bank owned but you know just to try to try to find information about uh, the property to see if it is comparable uh, to the property that I just uh, had under contract or got under contract or even looking at so uh, when you're dealing with a realtor you know they can provide comparable sales for a neighborhood for you Okay. Um, they also can provide information for cash transactions. All the cash transactions uh, within a 30, 60, 90 day time frame within your county. Then you can find pockets of uh, high cash transaction areas that you can start marketing to for cash buyers. Um, they also can potentially make offers for you uh, on REOs. So let's say you have a, a bank-owned property that you, that you see in, in, in a particular neighborhood and you want to make an offer on that. Well, the realtor can make that offer for you. I don't suggest that right in the beginning. I suggest only dealing with motivated sellers. When you start dealing with short sales and you start dealing with bank-owned properties, um, it becomes a lot more difficult. There's lots of contracts that have to be signed with the bank. And if you make the wrong move, you could find yourself in deep waters dealing with short sales and dealing with bank-owned properties. Now, um, um, I don't advocate that for you know just for when you first start, um, but when you start getting comfortable, once you get three, four, five, ten deals into it, you start making money in this business, then I would open that up as a lead source, and you can start making offers on bank-owned properties because they are flippable if you do it right. Okay, um, you just uh, have to build your confidence first, know exactly what you're getting up to. But I wouldn't suggest from brand new starting that. It's a uh, um, you could uh, get yourself in trouble. Okay, now, um, so what are you looking for? What type of realtor are you looking for? You're not looking for the top guy. You're not looking for the, the top producing agent in an office. Um, what you're looking for is, and you can call around to realtor offices. Let's, let's say it's Remax or let's say it's... Um, um, whatever else is in your uh, your city out there, you know, Codwell Bankers, Sotheby's, whatever it is, call around to different offices within your neighborhood, okay, and you're trying to find the new guy, the new guy that's looking for business, the newer guy um, that's motivated and hungry, 
that is out there soliciting, looking for leads, looking to try to build his uh, dream team as well. And part of his dream team is finding guys like you that are, are investors that can help tee up properties. Now, what can you offer them? Well, in exchange for you know comparable sales. Well, first thing, remember you're going to be marketing for motivated sellers. Now, remember that uh, I talked you know talked about Drew the uh, the other transaction we talked about. Well, the guy wants 170 thousand for his property. You know, maybe you know everything's worth uh, 80, 90 thousand dollars. Well, is that guy a potential short sale opportunity? He could be. So, you know, what I would do is say, hey, listen, bud, it sounds like you're over indebted on your house. So you got a couple different options. Just hang on to it and wait for the market to come back. You know, you could do that. Or, you know, if, if you can let it go to foreclosure, I don't suggest that. Or you could try to do a short sale on the property. And then you could refer them to your new friend realtor. So your new friend realtor could essentially now take that lead and they can um, work with them and they could list the property and they could work with the bank and try to do a short sale. And realtors um, are educated in that and they can learn how to do that and they know how to represent the client to go out and uh, get that deal done. So, you know, that lead will be something that a realtor will find very valuable uh, that they can generate income. They can get a 3% commission off off uh, listing that property and selling that property through the bank. Um, so for them, that could be potential income. So if you're if you're if you're taking those leads and you're passing it on to this particular realtor, or when you talk to this realtor, and you tell them, listen, I am doing massive amounts of marketing, and I get leads all the time from people that are you know for in short sale situations, I can pass them on to you. Also, I'm dealing with a lot of cash buyers, investors, and they also they go in and they fix up and flip properties. They might be looking for a realtor to list the properties on the sell side after they fix it up and renovate it and then they want to turn around I can refer you to them and you can get some business that way um, as well so that's what you can offer them you know and when you're talking to these realtors you know you know first off you want to do is, is like I said find the new guy and then go in and sit down and talk to them and talk to them about what you can offer what they can do for you and what you what you're looking for and tell them specifically I'm looking for um, comparable sales in a in neighborhood that you can send me a link so I can check out one all the pictures you know of the property now if you read my book and you go into flip to freedom.com I give you an exact formula on exactly what you're looking for to value a property. I think I did a podcast episode. I don't know exactly which one. You can go through the archives. But um, on exactly how to value a property, an exact formula to, that you can use to determine um, uh, what the value is. And give that criteria to the realtor. And uh, I'll, I'll give the criteria real quick to you, and it's this is that one you have to have properties that are within a one mile radius they have to be like property meaning if you have a two-story to a two-story or if you have a property that has a one acre it's on a one acre piece of land um, then it has to be comparable to another property it's on a one acre piece of land uh, so they have to be in a one mile radius right I usually start from the subdivision then I move out to the a quarter mile, then I move out a half mile, and then I move out one mile, looking for comparable sales, properties that are like property. Now they have to be within two to 300 square feet of the subject property. For an example, if you have a property that's 1,000 square feet, you want to have something that's either uh, 1,300 square feet down to 700 square feet. I would be more apt to look properties at the 1,000, you know, 12 or 1,300 square feet. Um, you know, for those comparable sales. Then you want to look at, because you're looking for the after repair value, is pictures of the properties that are um, fixed up and renovated. Or they have comments in the realtor section that says fully renovated, fully remodeled. Um, and then you can see the pictures that it's, that they've been done. So now, and also the sales, the comparable sales, sold properties, have to be within a 90 day time, time frame. Okay, so you're looking within 90 days within one mile that's a like property uh, that's renovated and fixed up. That will give you, and you're looking for three of those properties. Okay, so when you're talking to a cash buyer and they say, well, what's it worth? And you can say, well, hey, listen, I've got three comps 
They're within a quarter mile. They're a similar property, then a couple hundred square feet, and they're fully renovated. And here's what the prices are. The price is one's 110, one's 100, and one's uh, 105. So, I mean, I roughly call it about 105,000. That would be my ARV or after repair value uh, for the property. So, when you're talking to this realtor and you're talking to them about uh, looking for comparable sales, you can give them an idea of what you're looking for. Um, that formula, what you're looking for, and when you give him a property, right, and they can pull up using your criteria of exactly the type of properties um, that you're looking for, so he can send a comparable sales, and you can determine the ARV, and you can pass that information on uh, to the cash buyer, so it's easier for you to sell properties. All right, because uh, understanding value is incredibly important. We'll get into that in uh, future episodes as well. All right. The other thing, which would be easier, I mean, but is having the appraiser. Now, if you have an, a, a certified appraiser that's going to give you uh, values on the property, there's a couple things. Now, they are harder to find because some appraisers will say, well, I can't give you value. If I give you value, I have to write up a full appraisal. If I write up a full appraisal, it's going to be three hundred to fifty to five hundred dollars. That's not a guy that you want. We actually have an appraiser um, for forty dollars. Will go in and give us a written three to four page, basically report of an opinion of value, a price range of a hundred and let's say for an example on a property or a hundred thousand dollar property. He says, and then in that case, it'll be from a hundred to a hundred and ten thousand dollars, and he'll give three to four comparable sales. That uh, using the criteria that we just talked about, but it's something it's in writing that I can pass on to a cash buyer. So now the cash buyer, um, when they when I'm negotiating with them and they go, "Well, I, I think it's worth eighty thousand. Well, listen, I can I got a certified appraiser sent over a report and thing is worth between a hundred and a hundred and ten thousand dollars. So, you know, uh, unless you can give me something supporting showing your eighty thousand dollar value, well, I've got comps right here showing it's a hundred and ten thousand dollar value. So, it pretty much eliminates. Um, any type of uh, dispute on value, which is great, having it from the appraiser. Um, you will have to uh, talk to maybe 5 to 10 to 15 different appraisers, and you might not find one that's willing to basically give you something like that. The other thing you could do is uh, realtors, I mean, uh, appraisers have access to the multi-listing service and comparable sales. You can work a relationship with them as well to where uh, maybe you uh, pay them $20, $30, or you know, $10 or whatever to uh, for comps, so they can send over comps. I would prefer to work with a realtor uh, because, uh, first off, we can trade uh, leads for that for that information for free, um, other than the appraiser of paying an appraiser. But appraiser does come in handy if you can find someone for a very uh, cheap cost is willing to write up a, a opinion, opinion of value report for you. It's not crucial. You don't have to have an appraiser, um, but it definitely helps. Okay. Now, an insurance agent. Now, when a person uh, buys a property, and we talked about our example there, you got a motivated seller for uh, has fifty thousand dollar loan, you're buying it for sixty, and uh, you're going to turn around and sell it for seventy. That buyer, that cash buyer, is going to need to get insurance on the property, and uh, and you can refer them to an insurance agent. You can get an insurance quote on the property immediately, um, and then when the person, when your cash buyer is looking to purchase purchase it, you can say, listen, hey, I've, I've already got insurance, you know, all lined up for you if you'd like, and it's uh, it's through Joe Blow at, at, uh, at State Farm, and uh, and they will insure the property up to your standards there. So um, the good thing is, is that if you refer an insurance agent and they get business from you, from these buyers, a lot of these buyers um, have multiple properties. They have a multiple, you know, properties that they have insured, um, or they're brand new and they're get, getting started, you know, just getting started in the business, and they're building, you know, portfolios. Um, they can get future business. They could get their own personal cars. They could get their own personal residence. They could get maybe some uh, multi-unit uh, apartments that they have or something. But um, you're basically referring this insurance agent business in exchange for potential marketing dollars. So, and I wouldn't, you know, basically do that up front. I'd say, listen, you know, I'm, I'm starting my business here. I'm working. I'm looking to build my dream team. And obviously, uh, having the insurance agent in, in giving you referrals of uh, these these properties that these buyers are buying, um, you know, I like I look to like to set up a, a, a co-op marketing campaign. So, you know, if you're putting out yellow letters, or you're putting out bandit signs, they will share in the cost and some of those, uh, you know, um, you know, some of those marketing costs that you have uh, to be able, be able to offset some of that and your lead acquisition and uh, and 
put referrals out. Now, I wouldn't go right at first into that. I'd maybe start building a relationship, sending them some leads, and then say, listen, you know what? I'm, I'm looking to build my business and increase my marketing, and I've sent you four or five or six leads so far, and they've uh, worked out pretty well. And, and how would you say if we uh, work together on doing a, a co-op marketing campaign? And a lot of times, they'll say, absolutely, yes, let's do it which works great. That's it for this section. Now, I got two questions that I think are uh, extremely important for me to answer for you. And the first one is this. How do I know if I have a deal? Um, and the second one is, uh, what happens if another investor calls me off a of bandit sign or a Craigslist ad, and they have properties that they'd like to sell? What do I do with that? Is there a way I can make money off that? Now, um, for the first question, how do I know if I have a deal? Uh, that is very important because there's basically uh, there's two uh, two deals, um, two ways we can structure deals that we can uh, make potential profit off. And the first one is just a straight out wholesale deal. And a uh, wholesale deal is this to make it real simple for you. There's a formula, and the formula is the after repair value, what the property is worth after it's fully repaired. Minus 70%, which is 70% of the property. In this, let's, I'll give you a theoretical example. Let's say it's a $100,000 property. 70% is uh, $70,000. Then you minus the repairs. And then the repairs is, let's, in this example, let's call it $10,000, um, would be your sell price. So you have $100,000 property after repair value. Less 70% is $70,000. Less 10,000 repairs would get, bring it down to $60,000. So you know you can sell that property fast for $60,000. Now, anything under that could be potential profit. So let's say if you tie up the property for $50,000, you could turn around and sell it for sixty, dollars and you can make $10,000. That would be a typical, traditional, wholesale property uh, that you can turn around and sell and sell quickly. All right. Now, what if the lead comes in, right? And it's not a, the traditional. Let's say you have the same $100,000 uh, rep after repair value, but they owe $80,000 on the property. What do you do then? Well, there's only $20,000 of equity. You can't sell it to a wholesale person. What do you do with it? Do you just pass on that lead? No. What you can do is you can retail it. You can retail that property out and structure it as a subject to transaction, which works great because there's a lot of people out there right now that have cash but don't have the credit to get the loan or they don't want to go through the headache of getting a loan. So how would you structure that deal? Let's say for an example, it's a $100,000 property. They owe $80,000, right? And they have a good loan that's in place for, uh, let's say, a 30-year fixed. Um, and they get a good rate on the loan, so the payments are similar to what a, a rental market would be. Um, and then uh, in the example here, let's say they want uh, a couple thousand dollars to move um, out of the property, um, you know, anywhere from three to five thousand dollars. So you negotiate with them to give them the five thousand dollars, keep the existing loan in place of eighty thousand dollars for the term of three to five years. Okay, you're going to buy the property subject to the existing loan. You're going to keep the loan in place. Now. See, what happens is now you have you basically are going to give them in this example let's call it uh, two thousand dollars cash um, and keep the eighty thousand dollar loan in place. There's going to be a roughly about a thousand dollars of closing cost on there. Now what you can do then is now you can package up that deal and market it to people. Um, they can have a cash down, but then they don't have to come up with the eighty thousand dollars, and they can buy and own that property. And you can sell that and put that on Craigslist, or you can put it by putting signs up all around the property, uh, putting on Backpage, putting on Kijiji, or other different sites out there. But basically, someone can come in and they can put, let's say, thirteen thousand down, of which a thousand is going to go to closing cost, ten thousand is going to go to you, and two thousand is going to go to the seller. The person is going to now own the property, the buyer is, and they're going to have title to the property, and then they're going to be able to um, make the payments directly to the bank, um, or, the, or it can be serviced by a title company that will service that note for them. Um, and then when that's one of the things you want to ask when you're talking to an escrow officer to see if they have a servicing company to service subject to or wrap loans, um, which we talked about earlier. So that is something that's important, and that's how those transactions are done. So how do you know if you got a deal? Well, if it fits in those two molds, now it, it could be a property that has no equity. You could do the same thing. Um, not, not upside down. If deals are upside down, then you would refer them to the agent. 
to go out and list the property. Okay, so if the property has little to no equity, um, or or uh, enough equity that it would not fit the uh, wholesale model, then you can make those deals work. Um, or if it's just a straight wholesale deal, then you know it fits in that model and you can sell it as a wholesale property. So that's how you know if you have a deal. Anything else, right? It's not going to fit that mold, then I would do a pass on it, or I'd pass it on to the realtor to see if they could list it, and they could uh, um, list it as a short sale, and uh, and they could potentially make a profit on it. All right, now let's talk about what happens if another investor calls you off a Bandit sign or a Craigslist ad and says, hey, I got two or three properties I'm trying to wholesale right now, too. Um, can, you, know, you know, maybe we could work together, and maybe we could uh, make some money together. What, what, to, what do you do then? Uh, well, the, those work great if they are good deals. What I found is is that a lot of investors call me the exact same thing and say, "Hey, I got a bunch of properties. Let me see, you know, try to move them." And they're either they have them tied up from the bank, or they uh, they buy them at the courthouse steps at the auction or whatever, um, or they tie them up for motivated sellers. But what I found is is it doesn't fit that mold of a wholesale property, or it doesn't fit in the retail side. Either they're trying to sell it at seventy to seventy five percent, and uh, the, the property needs repairs. And they're just trying to be too greedy on the deal, and it just doesn't work. The properties don't sell. Now, if you uh, find a, a wholesaler that you can work with that can tee up good properties, then it works great. We have a wholesaler that we work with here in Phoenix, and uh, they come across some great deals, and we work together and we market that property, and we do it via an option agreement. Um, that gives us equitable interest in the property. It's a one-page option agreement um, that we sign, giving us a non-exclusive option, meaning that we can market it, and they can market it, and someone else can market it. Um, and then we, what we do is just tack on a small fee, anywhere from a three to $5,000 uh, a fee and a lift on the property, and then market it out to our, our cash buyers. And then we'll take in the, con the buy contract and then take it through the closing and close that deal. So that is how I would work. But I would... First off, um, have them send me via email a couple, two, three, or four of the properties that they have on the market, and I would do the uh, and analyze each one to see if it fits the mold, and uh, if it fits that mold where I could keep a loan in place, or I could if it fits the wholesale formula that we talked about earlier, then um, I would work with them and move forward and see if I can get those properties sold and, uh, and make a profit. Now those are great if you do find someone. They can tee up properties that are have some equity in, in them, and it works, and it fits with the criteria that you're looking for. Then you can build a great relationship with them, because think about it. They can tee up properties to you, and let's say you have a, a large buyer's list. You don't have to commit to buying it. You just have an option agreement on it. So there's no stress there of, oh my gosh, i got to find a buyer. But you can put it out, put it out to the market. If you have a buyer that likes the property and you can get it under contract, you can make a profit. What was your advertising cost? None. It didn't cost you anything for advertising. Those are some of the best deals. We do about two or three you know, of these deals a month. Um, that are great. We can make three to five thousand dollars. It's actually you know anywhere from nine to fifteen thousand dollars a month of extra with no advertising cost um, by providing uh, an ability for a wholesaler to market their properties through our buyers list and sell those properties quickly. So it, it is a great thing if you find someone that can tee up properties um, with that type of formula. All right. Now I always end with a quote, but I got something special for you today. Um, I posted on our Facebook fan page, um, Flip to Freedom, um, just search that in Facebook, and um, a video of Will Smith. Now, if you don't know much about Will Smith, he is a phenomenal gentleman, unbelievable success story. I mean, the guy has over 34 movies, um, ranging from uh, Seven Pounds, The Pursuit of Happiness, which is an unbelievable movie, I Am Legend, which was, that was a freaky movie. Hancock, which was great. These are recent ones. And he has in production right now Men in Black 3, and he has Men in Black 2 and Men in Black 1, which he, uh, which he created. So, um, and, and that. And he, he got his first Grammy when he was 19 years old. And, uh, and he got a second Grammy when he was uh, 22 years old. But, I mean, he's done phenomenal things in not only the mu music industry, but also as an actor. And he, is also has been inspired to go out there and share what he knows because he believes that he wants to go out and and make this world a better place by helping 
someone else out through his knowledge and information um, become better and become more. Now I want to share a clip of this video that I posted and um, and it's in and, and I talk a lot about um, it doesn't matter what type of talent you have. Um, it doesn't matter what type of uh, where you come, where where you've come from. It doesn't matter the uh, your education level. It doesn't matter if you went to college or not, or if you have a master's degree or whatever. It that doesn't matter. Okay, it does not matter. And what Will Smith is going to validate that for you because in this little clip, it is so important because he talks about why talent is not important, but skills are. And that's what you're developing, listening to this podcast and educating yourself and reading about and, and diving in and learning this. You are developing a priceless skill that you can take anywhere in this world. Well, maybe not the world. <laughs> anywhere in this country, in any city there is. And you'll be able to turn around and build the business by finding motivated sellers and matching them up with cash buyers and making a profit. And you are learning a skill that is... Uh, that you can have forever in this uh, in this life. So he's going to talk quickly exactly uh, the difference between talent and skill. So I'll let you uh, hear it right now. The separation of talent and skill is one of the, the 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 greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. I've, n I've never really viewed myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is ridiculous sickening work ethic you know while the other guy's sleeping I'm working while the other guy's eating I'm working there's no easy way around it no matter how talented you are your talent is going to fail you if you're not skilled mm -hmm. you know if you don't study if you don't work uh, really hard and dedicate yourself to being better every single day mm -hmm. you'll never be able to communicate with with people with your artistry the, the way that you want so the only thing that I see that is distinctly different about me is I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. You might have more talent than me, you might be smarter than me, but if we get on the treadmill together, <laughs> right, there's two things. You're getting off first yeah. or I'm going to die. It's really that simple. So let me ask you a question. If you were on the treadmill, would you have that attitude? And see, he's using the treadmill, obviously, as an example for a goal or a dream or a passion or something that you that is that they they're inspired to 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 do to become. And what is great about that little segment that I just shared is that it doesn't matter where you have come from. It matters in your commitment to making it happen no matter what. He was willing to die. <laughs> then get off that treadmill before one of us. And that is a passion and a commitment to making it happen no matter what. Now, you know, I, I, everybody has dreams that they want to accomplish. And, and, and dreams become a cliche or dreams become, oh, I you know, have dreams and whatever. In this next segment, it was from the movie The Pursuit of Happiness. And he's talking, Will Smith is talking to his son. And if you ever saw that movie, it is unbelievable what he went through personally with him and his young son um, in his pursuit of happiness and success and work ethic and what he accomplished. So I want to let you hear that right now. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. Not even me. All right? You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you you can't do it. want something go get it period so 
So are you ready to go get it? Go after your dream? Well, I believe you are. And I want you to listen real close. You might not believe in yourself. You might not have a wife that believes in you, friends that believe in you, family that believes in you, and you might feel alone like you're just trying to go out and accomplish this all yourself. But I can tell you this, I believe in you. It might sound stupid because I don't even know you, but you know what? I know me. And I am not the sharpest guy. I'm not the most talented guy. I'm not anything really special. I'm, I'm just an average guy that loves sharing inspirational things because those things, those inspirational things, are the things that kept me going when I didn't believe in myself. Those things that, you know, Tony Robbins or... Napoleon Hill, or I listened to in the car over and over and over and over again. When I didn't believe in myself, and I didn't think I could do it, I would listen to them and their stories of what they accomplished. And like I said, I'm just an average guy. And I know there are people listening to this that have more talent, more ambition than I do, and I know that you can take this information and hone this skill and learn this, and you will take it to far, far levels than I have ever taken it. But I want you to know this. I believe in you, because I know for a fact that you can do this. It's not rocket science. It's not difficult. It's not something that's elusive. It's something that you can do if you're willing to put forth the effort and worked harder than you ever worked before. And I'm going to tell you, you can do it. And I believe in you. I wish you ultimate success in your real estate investing career. And if you'd like more, please visit flip2freedom.com. That's flip, the number two, freedom.com. Stay tuned this week, and I, I apologize for getting this uh, episode out late, um, but it just wasn't good enough for me to put out. This is my second recording for doing this, and I have raised my standard, and I want it to be the best I can possibly be, and I hope I portray this to you through these episodes. So until then, take care, and God bless, and I wish you ultimate success. Music.